Welcome! In this session we will focus on ontologies. We will talk about what ontologies are and look at the parts that make up an ontology. We will also learn how ontologies can be described by their domain and range restrictions. Then we will see how ontologies and taxonomies come together. First we need to understand what an ontology is. Let's start with the definition of ontology. An ontology is a formal naming and definition of the types, properties and interrelationships of entities in a particular domain. Let's take a closer look at that definition. An ontology is a formal naming and definition. So it is a place where we define how we want something to be. Next it says of the types, properties and interrelationships of entities. In our case, the entities would be concepts in our taxonomy. So in the ontology we define types, properties and interrelationships of concepts. The last part of the sentence says entities in a particular domain. So an ontology is not something that is universally applicable. It is something that is valid for your domain. Within pool party we could say that an ontology is valid for your thesaurus in which you describe your domain. Taking that definition and translating it to what it means in pool party we could say that in an ontology we define the types, properties and relationships of concepts in a thesaurus. So there are three things that we define in the ontology types, properties and relationships. Let's take a look at each of those. In pool party types are called classes. A class is a way to define a set of concepts that share certain properties or relationships. This means that once you have a class you can say that all instances of that class are allowed to have a certain attribute or the two classes can have a specific type of relationship. Classes can also have subclasses or be subclasses of other classes. If a class is a subclass of another class this means that all instances have to be members of the superclass before they can become members of the subclass. It is important to understand that in the ontology you define the class and which attributes and relationships classes are allowed to have, but you do not actually define the attribute value itself. In the ontology all you do is describe how things can be but not how they actually are. In other words, in an ontology you define which information you are allowed to associate with certain concepts, but you do not specify the actual information itself. Let's take a look at an example. We could say that we have an ontology we want to use to describe cocktails and everything you need to make cocktails. You could, for example, define a class called alcoholic beverage. For that class you could define certain attributes and relations and we will get to that in a minute. You could also define a class called beverage. Now an alcoholic beverage is a special kind of beverage. This means that every alcoholic beverage is also a beverage. In an ontology we would model that by saying that alcoholic beverage is a subclass of beverage. In order to be a member of the class alcoholic beverage, a concept also has to be a member of the class beverage. Let's go to the next thing we define in an ontology, properties. Properties are called attributes in pool party. Every class can have attributes. This means that once you have defined a class, you can say that all concepts in that class are allowed to have a certain attribute. Attributes are a way to associate all kinds of information with concepts in your taxonomy. In pool party, attributes are fields where you can input information freely. If we go back to our example, we could now add attributes to each of the classes we have defined. 
We could, for example, create an attribute for beverage that is called image. It could be that you would like to use this field to link your concept to an image of that concept that is stored somewhere else. Since alcoholic beverage is a subclass of beverage, all members of the class alcoholic beverage would also be allowed to have the attribute image. Now we can go ahead and specify an attribute for alcoholic beverage that is called percent alcohol per volume. This attribute will only be available for concepts of the class alcoholic beverage. The third thing we define in ontologies are relationships between concepts. You have already heard in previous sessions that in pool party you can define certain relationships between concepts. For example, you can say that two concepts are related. Now, in an ontology, you have the opportunity to define additional kinds of relationships. You can be much more precise when you build your thesaurus, because now you can say what kind of relationship two concepts have. Let's go back to our example. In order to establish relations between classes, we first need to think of another class. We could define a class called Cocktail. Now we could start creating relations between our beverage or alcoholic beverage classes and the Cocktail class. As an example, we could define a relation from Cocktail to Beverage that we call Contains. We could use this to specify which beverages go into which cocktail. Now we would only be able to see which cocktail contains which beverage but we would not be able to tell which beverage goes into which cocktail. If we want to be able to know this, we would have to specify another relation. We could say that a beverage is contained in a cocktail. Now we would be able to tell which cocktails a beverage goes into as well. What we can also do is create relations between instances of the same class. For example, we could say that cocktails can also be related to each other. For example, we could say that cocktails can be variants of other cocktails. Let's recap. In an ontology, you can define classes, attributes and relations of concepts. For every class, you can define attributes. Between classes, you can define relations. Now we have heard what an ontology is and taken a look at a small example. Another example of an ontology would be one that you are already familiar with, SCOS. The Simple Knowledge Organization System is actually an ontology as well. We have heard that in an ontology you specify classes, attributes and relations. Let's take a quick look at the classes, attributes and relations of SCOS that are most used in Pool Party. The SCOS classes that are used most prominently in Pool Party are SCOS Concept and SCOS Concept Scheme. You have already seen in previous sessions that in Pool Party you create SCOS Concepts and SCOS Concept Schemes. Now you know that they are actually classes that are defined in the SCOS ontology. The most important SCOS relations in Pool Party are the SCOS Broader, SCOS Narrower and SCOS Related relations. In the SCOS ontology it is defined that SCOS concepts can have these relations. So you can relate two SCOS concepts with a SCOS Broader and SCOS Narrower relation, for example. Now, for the SCOS Concept Scheme class, this is different. If you want to relate a SCOS concept to a SCOS concept scheme, you need to use the SCOS top concept of and SCOS has top concept relation. So the relation between SCOS concepts is different from the relation of SCOS concepts to SCOS concept schemes. There are more relations defined in a SCOS ontology and you will get to know more of them in other sessions of this e-learning course. Let's have a look at the SCOS attributes. In the SCOS ontology there are a number of attributes defined. You were already introduced to some of them in previous sessions 
and you will hear more about others in future sessions. All SCOS labels are attributes, for example. In Poo Party, the SCOS Pref label, SCOS Alt label and SCOS Hidden label are all attributes of the SCOS concept class. This means that only resources that are of the class SCOS concept can have SCOS Pref labels, SCOS Alt labels and SCOS Hidden labels. Now you can see that SCOS is a full ontology. You have classes, relations and attributes and the different classes have different relations and attributes. Here you can already see one of the big advantages of using ontologies. The different classes have different relations and attributes. This means that you can restrict the use of certain attributes and relations to certain classes. These restrictions are called domain and range restrictions. To understand this, it is best to go back to the triple data structure. You remember that all data about your taxonomy is stored in the format of subject, predicate, object statements. Classes can be in either the subject or the object position of a triple. Relations and attributes are always in the predicate position of a triple. The difference between relations and attributes is that triples with a relation have classes in both the subject and the object position of the triple. You remember that relations describe the relationship of two classes. With attributes this is different. Triples with an attribute always have a value in the object position of the triple. These values do not have a class. They are strings or numbers, for example, but they are not concepts. So the difference between attributes and relations is that triples with attributes contain only one class and it is always in the subject position. And triples with a relation contain two classes, one in the subject and one in the object position of the triple. Domain and range are a way of saying which classes are allowed to be in which positions of a triple. In this way you can describe which triples you can build with the classes, relations and attributes in your ontology. When you specify which classes can be related to which other classes or which classes can have which attributes, you are in fact defining domain and range restrictions. Now the domain is the class that can be in the subject position of a triple and the range is the class that can be in the object position of a triple. We have heard that triples with a relation have classes in both the subject and the object position. So relations have both a domain and a range. Triples with attributes only have one class in the subject position of a triple and a value in the object position. Therefore attributes only have a domain and no range. If we go back to our example, we can take a look at the contains relation. If you remember, we said that cocktails can contain beverages. We just learned that the domain of a relation is the class that is in a subject position. For the contains relation, this would be the cocktail class. The range is the class that is in the object position of the triple. In this example, the contains relation would have the beverage class in its range. If we take a look at the attribute percent alcohol per volume, we can build a triple that says alcoholic beverage percent alcohol per volume value. The value does not have a class, so the attribute percent alcohol per volume only has a domain the alcoholic beverage class. Now that you know what domain and range restrictions are, you would be able to tell which triples can be built with an ontology when you get a table of the domain and range restrictions of all the attributes and relations in the ontology. This is also how ontologies are described in Pool Party. But don't worry, when you use Pool Party to build your ontologies, 
pool party will take care to assign the correct domain and range restrictions to your classes, relations and attributes. The next step is to understand how ontologies and taxonomies work together. We have heard that in the ontology we describe classes and we say which attributes and relations classes can have. Now in the taxonomy we describe the actual instances of class members, the specific values of attributes and the relations of instances to each other. In our example ontology we have the classes cocktail and beverage with the subclass alcoholic beverage. We have relations between cocktail and beverage. Cocktails contain beverages and beverages are contained in cocktails. We also have the attribute image for all beverages and the attribute percent alcohol per volume that is associated with the class alcoholic beverage. We will need a small taxonomy so we can see how taxonomies and ontologies work together. Let's say we have a cocktails taxonomy with a concept scheme for cocktails and a concept scheme for beverages. To keep our example simple, let's start with one single cocktail, the screwdriver. On the beverages, say we have orange juice and vodka. Now we want to apply our ontology onto our taxonomy. First, we will have to classify the elements of our taxonomy. We can classify screwdriver as a cocktail. Orange juice we will classify as beverage. For vodka we will apply the class alcoholic beverage. Since alcoholic beverage is a subclass of beverage, this means that vodka will automatically also be classified as beverage. Once we have classified our concepts, we can use the custom relations and attributes of our ontology. For our cocktail, this means that we can use the custom relation contains. Our beverages have the custom relation contained in and the attribute image available. Our alcoholic beverage will also have the custom attribute percent alcohol per volume available. You can see that vodka now has both the attributes and relations of beverages and alcoholic beverages because it is a member of both classes. Now we can start using these relations. We can say that the screwdriver contains both orange juice and vodka. We could also add the inverse relation stating that orange juice is contained in the screwdriver and that vodka is contained in the screwdriver as well. We can add a URI that points to a picture of orange juice. And we can specify that vodka contains 40% alcohol per volume. This is how ontologies and taxonomies work together. In the ontology you define which classes, relations and attributes you want to be able to model. In the taxonomy you then use these classes, relations and attributes to enrich your data model and add in more information. In the next sessions you will see how you can create and use ontologies in Pool Party. Stay tuned!